Yo, hello everyone, welcome back to Ace Attorney Apollo Justice. Man, I'm real sorry. I feel so bad that I'm stopping these at such a bad point. But, ugh, the, ugh, this is crazy. This is absolute madness. What is going on here? Exactly how did you come by your privileged knowledge of the victim's head? So we found out a lot in the last one. A lot that's not looking too good, in my opinion. Kristoff, please say it ain't so. Because honestly, like, this is just gonna be like 5 and 0 for me for liking, like, dudes that are bad. I don't want you to be bad. Please don't be bad. So, this is your reason. The reason why you put the victim's hat back on. Your point, Mr. Gavin? It's come down to this, has it? Phoenix Wright. Oh no. Order. I will have order, Mr. Payne. Y yes, Your Honor. I believe this court has been left with no other choice. Are you prepared to hear the defense attorney Gavin's testimony? Uh, 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 well, as a prosecutor, I... I guess we're going to. Very well. We'll break for ten minutes. Oops. Oh, man, I always do this. After which, Mr. Gavin will take the stand for a cross-examination. Oh, no. Are we all clear on that? Crystal clear, Your Honor. Very well. This will be the final recess for the day. I'm so sorry it was right here. I'm so- ugh. It's impossible for me to know. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Sometimes when I've recorded this before, I felt like a recess was coming, so I, I was just holding on to it. And then the video is like 90 minutes long because it never came. <laughs> Mr. Gavin and Mr. Wright are both in the judge's chamber. I wonder what they're talking about in there. Who'd have thought today would turn out like this? May I? Who's that? Hello? Who are you? You look very familiar. Huh, what? Hello, sir. Please, pick a card. W what's all this about? She's a magician, is she? But she looks cute. Uh, is this one okay? Excellent. I have a message for you. The last hand is about to be played. You'll need a trump card to make it. A trump card? The card you've chosen is magical. Use it wisely, and the game is yours. That's all. Uh, uh, hello? An ace. Where do I remember that card from? This is the missing card, isn't it? The one that we were looking for before. No way. Mr. Smith's hand had three aces and Mr. Wright's two. It's five aces in all. It is true. I've seen it, the fifth ace. So, <coughs> excuse me. So it was real. There was cheating, I swear to you. But, the missing fifth ace. Wait, this blotch of red. Is this blood? I bet it is. You have your trump card. Now it's up to you to cut the deck and draw the truth. Hang on a second. Stand right there in front of me while I do this. Wait a minute. Do we not have it yet? Oh, I guess it didn't actually go into our inventory yet. My father's fate is in your hands. I know you can do it. This is Phoenix's daughter, is it? Oh my. Is it? Or is it Kristoff's? I can't tell. I'm so confused. This is what happens when I don't record these all at once. But she's too old to be Phoenix's daughter. He would have had to have her, like, back in the day when we were playing the games. The first three. That didn't happen, did it? Did I miss it? Oh my god. This bloodstained card. Is this my trump card for finding the truth? Okay. I fell deep into thought as my mind raced to understand what this all meant. Yeah, w is she Phoenix's daughter? I can't, I can't remember. That girl, I'd seen her recently, but where I thought... That's when I made the connection. Yeah, it was in the picture. It was a different color, though, so it's obviously her. There we go, there's the card. I want to look at it. Right. Well, I'm gonna have to look at it in here, I guess. Hello. How are you? Looks good in here. All right, let's do it right now before anything else happens. All right, uh, let's check. Here it is. Uh, can we please look at this? The blood stain. A single drop of blood marks the front of the card. All right, anything else? Anything on the back? No, it's just a red card. Okay. 
Fine. <sighs> Jesus. Well, here we go. This is gonna be bad. I can already feel it. Court will now reconvene. Defense Attorney Christoph Gavin, will you please take the stand? Here he is. Hi, darling. Oh, no. Now then, if you would, Mr. Payne? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, will Mr. Uh, uh, the witness state his name and occupation? Is this farce necessary, Your Honor? Believe me, far stranger things have gone on in courtroom. Oh, yeah, it has. Fine, I'll play along. First, there's one thing we need to have made clear. How did you know about the secret beneath the victim's hat? By secret, I'm guessing he means the fact that Mr. Smith was bald. Forgive my curiosity, but what is it about this fellow's head? Your Honor seems to have an inordinate interest in it. Objection! Whoa! That was Phoenix! Whoa, hi, buddy! Yeah! Can't believe they let him back here with me. <gasps> this music! Hell yes! I wouldn't call it inordinate, Mr. Gavin. Mr. Wright! What do you think you're doing, right? Wow, things sure look different from the other side. You know what I mean, Apollo? I do! I think I do! Speaking of looking from the other side, let's consider something for a second. The victim wore that hat all night, never once taking it off except for that one time. That one time? Being the instant he was hit. Oh. When Mr. Wright returned from reporting the crime, the hat was lying on the floor. Mr. Wright picked it up and placed it on the victim's head. In other words, in order to have seen Mr. Smith's bald head, you would have had to be at the scene of the crime, at the time of the crime. In other words, you'd have to be the real killer. Is that what you're trying to say? Maybe? I don't know anymore. <laughs> this is all too much. Not bad, Apollo. Hey, thanks! Oh, Phoenix! <laughs> uh oh no. Don't have a freak out, please. You're not gonna go Damon Gant on me, are you? Mr. Gavin? I'm afraid that I haven't been entirely honest with the court. You don't say. Oh, what? Oh, I assure you I had the noblest of intentions. I did it all to protect my client, Mr. Wright. Did you? Yet, I'm afraid in the current situation I see little reason to hide anything. Very well. Allow me to tell you the truth of what happened that night. Alright. Finally, you may begin your testimony. Tell us, how were you involved in the events of that fateful night? Oh no, this is gonna be good. That fateful night, tell me everything. Although you probably won't. The rage I sensed in that man that night troubled me, so I returned to the club. I went down to the basement and peeked in through the little window to the hideout. It must have been right after the murder took place. The victim was dead, as he appears in the photo. A bald head, an unconscious girl, and Wright holding a bottle in his hand. What? I sensed that was not the best place for me to be at the time, and so I left. You just left him like that. That's when the call came from Wright. Hmm. So, you witnessed the murder? For better or worse, I missed the actual moment of the deed. Mr. Gavin, may I remind you that you are on, on Mr. Wright's defense team? Your testimony is clearly disadvantageous to your client. Oh dear, how's this gonna turn out? What else could I say? I'm standing on the witness stand, after all. So you are, Mr. Gavin. Uh-oh. And you had to testify as you just did. You had to tell them you saw the scene of the crime through that little window. Uh, Mr. Wright? You had to say that. Because that was the only probable window of opportunity. Right, Apollo? Oh! Oh, I think I see what he might be getting at here. But we'll have to check something first. Mr. Wright, the defense should do the cross-examination, not the defendant. Sorry! Mr. Justice, are you prepared? <laughs> no. Yes, no, I am. I think I know what I have to look for, actually. Uh, you know what? <clears throat> I'm so sorry about my voice, you guys. Uh, let's look at this right now, actually. So he's saying that he saw everything like the photo. Now, the photo doesn't even have the bald head, first of all. Second of all, I want to check this one as well. Can we see that little window in this picture? I don't think. But it's hard to tell. I don't know if that thing in the upper left is it. Or not. Chip photo. 
There was a point where we could see where the window was. I bet you anything, if he saw through the window, it would maybe be a different vantage point or something? I think that's what they were getting at just now. I can't believe I'm going up against Mr. Gavin. This trial is getting weirder and weirder. Yeah, strap in, boy. It's probably going to get much worse. If I know these games. All right. Pressing everything. The rage I sent to that man last night troubled me, so I returned to the club. All right? Tell me about that. That man. You mean Mr. Smith? He was different from the other customers. His aura, shall we say? I knew he was a serious poker player, but it was more than that. So then you knew the true nature of your client's job? Of course. But I also knew he wasn't engaged in gambling, which would be illegal. Well, it makes sense that he'd know. They were friends, after all. Right? Worried for my friend, I returned to the club. You see, I feared this Mr. Smith might be someone coming to settle an old score. I see. What happened then? God, this music is so good! Why is the music in these games so good? Went down to the basement and peeked through the window to the hideout. There's gotta be something here. The little window. You mean the one used to keep watch up the stairs? There it is. Okay, so let's think about this. The crime scene photo was taken then from like the bottom right-ish. Looking onto the... To Mr. Smith, right? Because it's not the other way around. Okay. So from there, what could he have actually seen? It's really not that much of a vantage point from there, is it? Yes, a relic of the ancient past. The black market has used it, I believe. Why did you go through the trouble of peeking in through the window? Wouldn't it have been easier to just open the door and go into the room? Yeah, what about that? I didn't want to upset Wright, you see? Upset Mr. Wright? Yes. What if my fears had been unfounded? I'd be walking in on their match. Bad form, to say the least. Hmm. So far, everything he's saying makes sense. Alright. Must have been right after the murder took place. Tell me about that. How do you know it was right after the murder? Really? No need to shout, Justice. Oh. Oops. I was just getting to that part in my testimony. Ah, there he is, the coolest defense in the West we know and love. Even when you're standing up there on the witness stand, something's never changed. I was afraid you'd change too, right? But you haven't. You and that overbearing personality of yours. Oh, with friends like these, who needs enemy? True. You're not wrong. Victim was dead as he appears in the photo. I feel like we could almost get this one too. But let me go to the next one as well. By photo, you mean the second photograph of the crime scene? Precisely. You see, he wasn't wearing his hat then. I saw his head when he was dead. And then Mr. Wright came along and replaced his hat. Can you describe the scene of the crime for us? Bald head, an unconscious girl, and Wright holding a bottle in his hand. This is the one I feel is the, is the problem. I'm pressing it. Let's see what he says. <clears throat> I mean, I'm gonna press everything. I didn't know if I should present the photo there or not, but there really isn't a photo yet of where the window was. Those were the only three of the scene of the crime? Yes, as far as I saw, at least. Then we're back where we started. The killer was the defendant, Phoenix Wright. Who else could it have been? But why didn't you talk to the police? Two reasons. First, I didn't actually witness the very moment of the crime. Second, my office was asked to defend Wright. Even after seeing what I had seen, I couldn't abandon my friend. Yeah, right. Hmm. Whoa. What's wrong, Apollo? There must have been someone else there at the moment of the crime. Justice. I just said I saw no one. Not to salt. Oh. But that goes against what Mr. Wright said. I see what he's getting at here. Ah, oh, yes. This mysterious fourth person. Who would conveniently be the real killer, I suppose? Glad to see we agree, Mr. Gavin. Let me pose a question, then. Tell me. What possible reason did the real killer have to swap cards in the victim's hand? Okay, the real reason? Perhaps you can show us a reason why such a thing would be necessary. How can I show something I can't find myself? Remember, Apollo, the card that was swapped out was the fifth ace. That's right. We do have it, too. The fifth ace, right. Well, Mr. Justice? 
The question of why the killer would swap out a card has been raised. Can you point to a reason? Okay. Show evidence or not yet. No, we have the ace though, right? So that's what they're looking for. It's now or never. The defense would like to present evidence to the court. Evidence showing the reason why a card was swapped out. What do you guys say about that? Then go ahead and point out your reason, Mr. Justice. Why did the killer take the fifth ace? Probably because it had blood on it. If I had to guess. My reason is, uh, this! Is that a, an ace? Why? Why, it's got blood on it. Right next to the spade. Oh, what? Oh no, why? You were so handsome. I mean, you still are. But... This is insane! Why wasn't I told about this? Why? His, his underwear just blew right the fuck off. Could this be? Could this be the missing fifth ace? Uh-oh. In inconceivable! How could you- Oh look, his face is twitching, look at that! What are you doing with that card? Um, well that's the thing. Why is Mr. Kevin so upset? Paolo doesn't get it yet, does he? It's just a fishy card for some fishy girl. Oh, that card, it's mine. That is, I picked it up at the Borscht Bowl Club that night after the murder had occurred. I gave it to my daughter. Cards are her stock and trade after all. God, how can you have a daughter that old? I need to know these- Don't tell me in the comments, I'm sure we'll find out. No. Impossible. Unacceptable. The court can't accept this as evidence. It's fraud. A fraud? How can you be so sure? What? I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real card from the crime scene. The real killer. Oh. Allow me to elaborate. What if this trace of blood was the reason? The reason for... For the killer to take the card from the scene of the crime. Where are you going with this? Taking a look at this photo and the victim's head. At the moment of the crime, his hat fell to the floor, and a trickle of blood ran from his forehead down to the back of his head, right? Couldn't a drop of that blood have fallen on one of the cards? Oh, I see. I suppose. The killer then took the card to hide the blood. Objection. What you mean, though? Regardless, that evidence is non-permissible. Oh? Right, regardless of how you wasted the last seven years, you used to be a lawyer. You know what a serious crime it is to conceal evidence. Oh, we can discuss the finer points of our legal system later. Man, Phoenix is so sassy now, though. He's so sassy. What? Well, how has he changed so much? God, I really hope we find out. What's important now is that I've answered your question. What are you talking about? He's drawing him out by, like, by doing nothing. Except being snark. You wanted to know why the killer would have taken a card from the crime scene. And now I've told you. That one drop of blood would have been decisive evidence, you see. Objection. You can keep objecting all you want. I will never tire of hearing it from you, but man. Th this is baseless conjecture. Baseless. Objection. Phoenix. Yeah. That's what, I, that's what I'm talking about. The point. It's got the point. Oh, I assure you it's quite based. We're all a little based in here. What? It's amazing, really. How a single drop of blood on a single card can lead us to the truth. It's quite simple. Well, Apollo? Yes? Try picturing the scene of the crime, okay? In your head. That was a weird break. Oh, wow, oh, wow, look at this. 3D, you guys, we're in the future! This is so cool! The murder took place in the hideout. The body of the luckless victim was found at the poker table, right? And, before the killer swapped a card out, there was a single card with a drop of blood on it from the victim's hand, or in the victim's hand, sorry. Given this, there is one decisive problem with the scene. Hmm. Well, what is it? Let's keep it simple, shall we? Given that there was a drop of blood on the card, Whose position in this diagram doesn't fit? Oh, I see. Okay, let's look. The victims, the killers, the witnesses, the second witnesses? Whose position doesn't fit with the bloody card? Let's think about this now. 
All right, give me a second to, th I love Apollo's little thing. Look at it, <laughs> it's so cute. Whose position doesn't fit with a bloody cart? Oh, I need my stylus too, hang on. My be. I don't want to touch this with my fingers and get it wrong. Okay, so the victim is there in the chair. Oh! Okay, I think I understand. They're saying the killer was down to the south. The witness was in the middle, but oh, he could not have seen it from there, though. Huh. In my mind, it would be this. Well, isn't it the victim's position that's the problem? I don't follow your logic here, Mr. Justice. Well, look, the victim was struck on the head, sending him back in his chair. You'd think any blood would fall behind the body, not onto the- Yeah, exactly. All the blood that we saw was on the table. Oh. I mean, if it, if it fell on the card, then it had to have been somewhere there. Take a look at the photo again. If he bled in this position, yeah, it would all be on the floor, down the back of the chair. The blood would fall on the floor, not on the cards. Why, that's right. So what does this mean? Incidentally, we were sitting in swivel chairs. Swivel chairs? Oh, man. Apollo, try turning the chair around. Wait, what? Recreate the crime scene. Try turning the chair around? Oh. Okay. How do you- Oh my god! Oh, I see! Okay! The chair was facing the other way? It would have to be. Oh my god! That makes perfect sense then! Wow, this is cool. Wow, I get to recreate crime scenes and everything. The victim's chair was facing away from the table. How could that be though? It makes sense for what I'm thinking about how the murder took place. But why would it be turned around? When Mr. Wright returned from informing the police, which way was the chair facing? When I came back to the room, the body was facing a scene in this photo. Right, so it was turned around. Also, the hat was put back on, if you recall. That would mean the killer turned the chair back around. Kristoff? Let's take the next step. Look at the di- look at this diagram! We know now the victim was facing away from the table at the time of the murder. But this creates another significant contradiction. It sure does. Again? Let's test your reasoning skills again, shall we? Well, they're not that great, but I'll try. Apollo, whose location on this diagram contradicts our new understanding of the crime? The victims, the killers, the witnesses, the second witnesses? No, it's got to be the killer now. Whose location creates a contradiction? It has to be the killer. Because th then that doesn't make any sense. Doing this. The victim was struck from the front, correct? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He was struck in the front of the head, where the, the bruise shows up on his photo, with the bottle. So how could that have been? Indeed. Well, wouldn't it be hard for the killer to hit him from the front? Sitting where his indicator currently is? Yep. I would think it'd be quite hard, yes. What now, Peridot? Yes, but what you're saying makes no sense. Why would the victim suddenly turn to face the wall in the middle of a game? I believe a sufficient reason will soon come to light. Well, let's get that reason soon. What? There's something in this diagram that makes far less sense, actually. Look again at the diagram. Apollo, if the victim was struck while he was sitting as shown here, where would his assailant be standing? In front of him, but how? There's like a cabinet or something there? It would have to be there, though. I'm th I think. Try marking it on the diagram. What? But... There's no room to put a mark where the killer should be. Don't worry. Let's think it through. <gasps> Is that a cabinet that opens? Could a person fit in it? What about that? We know the victim was facing towards the wall at the time of the crime. That's the only thing we know for sure. Try to forget about everything else. Well, if that's the case, and he really wants me to forget about everything else... Alright, where would the killer have to be standing to strike the victim from the front? He'd have to be in whatever this is. I can't remember off the top of my head what it is. But if it's a cupboard or a cabinet or something that someone could get into, it's possible. 
I'm gonna go with that. The killer had to be standing- well, up here. Paradox, shut up. You get points for flair, but that's about all you get. Hey, at least I've got hair, though. Oh, I thought I was onto something there, too. I hardly need to point out that the standing there would be impossible. The victim is facing a solid cupboard. Yeah, but someone could be in it, though. At least it's that, and not like nothing. Why are you claiming the killer climbed the cupboard and hit him from above, huh? Oh, I guess that's point. It's simple logic, really. If this was the only place the killer could have been standing, then that means that at the very moment of the crime... Wait, I know. At the moment of the crime, the cupboard wasn't there? Oh! See, I'm stupid. This is why this game is so good to lead you down the right path sometimes, because, like, I automatically thought someone was hiding in the closet or something. What's this now? I mean, that's the only explanation, right, Mr. Gavin? What you gotta say about it? Your Honor, I have a suggestion for the defense. We should arrange to examine the cupboard in the hideout immediately. Are we gonna do that? Bailiff, let's send a team to the crime scene immediately. Have them try to move the cupboard. Ah, uh, Your Honor. What? There's one more thing your men should look for. Please give this to the bailiff. Hmm? Hmm, yes. I see. You do belong in the courtroom after all, Mr. Wright. I do my best. What does it say, I wonder? Well, we're gonna find out. Let's forge ahead here while we wait. There's more? Look at this diagram once more. It's been changed. If the killer was standing here at the time of the crime, then this cupboard wasn't here, which means... Apollo, try moving the cupboard. Move it? To, like, where? To the left. <gasps> oh. My. God. Oh, look, look at the CSI shit. This is so cool. As you can see, the cupboard was the problem. At the time of the murder, it has to have been shown- it has to have been as shown here. Covers of the window. Now everything is in place to reconstruct the moment of the crime. Oh my. What's this? What is it now? Look at this diagram of the crime scene once more. It appears we found yet another contradiction. What I believe to be the final contradiction, in fact. Huh? Oh, sorry, I thought it was a judge. Oh, dang! Notice something, Apollo? Our line of deduction is rapidly approaching its logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Justice, please point to the new contradicting indicator. Is it the victim, the killer, the witness, the second witness? It's gotta be he couldn't see through the window now. What indicator in this diagram contradicts what we know about the crime? Yeah, it's gotta be him now. Has to be. Oh man. Uh, about this cupboard. Are we all okay with assuming it was moved? Sure, why not? Well, if it was, something really doesn't fit. The cupboard would completely cover up the window to the stairs. Oh. That's right. Someone standing outside wouldn't be able to see in. Someone like Mr. Gavin. What? What did you say? Oh, his underwear just went. Oh, no. That's unfortunate. Oh, is the coolest defense in the West losing his cool? Damn, Phoenix, though. You were so savage. When did you get this way? How? Don't expect me to play along with your little game, right? It's only a game until someone gets killed, Mr. Gavin. And someone was. While the window to that room was blocked by a cupboard. Oh, no. So, Mr. Gavin, perhaps you'd like to explain to the court. Exactly. Where did you witness the crime scene from? Ugh. Excuse me, Your Honor. Order. This is a court of law and I will have order. We, we, we just now received word from our investigative team at the Borscht Bowl Club. They've examined the cupboard in the hideout, Your Honor. Oh? And what did they find? Well, Your Honor, it turns out there's a secret passage behind it. What? Oh no! Oh shit! Oh yes, I believe I mentioned something of the sort before. This is one of the tricks to the room of our many regulars know about. I do remember him saying something about that now that he mentions it. A secret passage is a handy thing to have when you're engaged in illegal goings on. Never know when you might need to duck away from the eyes of the law. So, the room has a secret passage? Where does it go? Where indeed? The other side connects to the restaurant above. The underworld bosses could get away from the cops. And enjoy a cold bowl of borscht, no doubt. 
just like our killer. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness! This is crazy. This is so good. Phoenix, I love you. You see where our line of simple deductive reasoning has led us, Apollo? I sure do. I see it, but I don't believe it. That girl wasn't kidding when she said I needed this trump card for the last hand. At the time of the murder, the window was blocked, and the victim's hat was off his head for the few minutes between Mr. Smith's murder and Mr. Wright's return from calling the cops. In other words, the only place anyone could have seen the victim's bald head was from inside the hideout. Well, Mr. Gavin, come on, say something. Is he going to? Hmm. Dare I ask what really happened that night? Actually, I think we can probably figure it out ourselves at this point. That night, uh, for whatever reason, our killer had a date with Mr. Smith. A date with destiny. There he crouched, hidden in the secret passageways behind the cupboard. Holding his breath, waiting for just the right moment. Then the chance came, and he took it. Oh, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, man. I'm getting all... I'm getting the vapors from all this. What? Why did you do that? Wait here, I'll get help. Miss Olga Orley was out cold, struck by Mr. Smith. But as time was soon to come, Mr. Wright went upstairs to call the cops, leaving Mr. Shady Smith alone in the hideout with the unconscious dealer. Oh. So he bonked the girl for failing to, to, to con. Phoenix is right, holy shit, what did you do? I'm calling the police. Left, then here it come. Then our killer stepped from the passage and into the hideout. The victim must have heard the cupboard sliding aside. He wheeled his chair around to look and- After the deed was done, the criminal must have seen the blood on the card. He would have, of course, realized the need to destroy the evidence. That single spot of blood told the whole story of the crime. This is amazing. Too bad for him he didn't linger any longer in the hideout that night. If he had, he might have noticed the cards on the floor. And the fact that they were all red. Ooh. Uh-oh. Boy, you're alright. Your underwear's gone, boy. It's okay with me, though. Oh, no. What? Oh, God. What's gonna happen? This is so good. Well, it seems this trial has taken yet another turn. There can't be another recess. Oh, my God. I'm truly sorry I had to see this day come, Mr. Gavin. Is, there, is that it, then? Mr. Gavin? Mr. Payne! Yeah, uh, <coughs> yes, Your Honor. The prosecution will continue its investigation. As for Mr. Phoenix Wright, the defendant, he is hereby cleared of all suspicion. Uh. Believe me when I say I don't believe this is happening, Mr. Gavin. But I'm afraid circumstances call for me to issue a warrant for your arrest immediately. Objection! Oh no. You're so good looking. What a waste. Oh, no need to apologize. I rather enjoyed myself. Did you? Oh dear. It's not every day you get to witness a legendary attorney's dirty tactics firsthand. Don't you talk about my dirtiness. You don't know. Your point, Mr. Gavin? Frankly, Your Honor, I'm shocked that a person of your caliber would be taken in by such a low grade parlor trick. Uh, excuse me? The defendant is cleared of all suspicion. This is hardly the time for jokes, Your Honor. Mr. Wright hasn't proven anyone's guilt or innocence here. What he has done is used illegal evidence to put the blame on someone else. And not just anyone else, but me, his own defense attorney. Uh, illegal evidence? I don't think so. Let me ask you, Mr. Gavin. Is there still any reason at present to suspect me of wrongdoing? Of course. This bottle, for instance. The bottle of grape juice Mr. Wright was drinking. How do you intend to explain away the fingerprints on the murder weapon? He was drinking out of it, of course. And not just any fingerprints. Am I right, Mr. Payne? Uh, actually, yes. The fingerprints on the bottle were uh, upside down. I seem to recall this being an issue earlier. The court on this case demand an explanation. I can think of only one reason why one would hold a bottle upside down. And that is to hit someone with the bottom of the bottle. Well, Your Honor? Hmm. 
Ah, uh, see how the codfish squirms to the last? Well, Apollo? Yes? Your boss seems awfully concerned about this bottle still. But I'm sure you can come up with a suitable explanation, just like that. Uh, uh yeah. Uh, just like what? Why would anyone grab a bottle upside down other than to- well, Don't let him trick you into thinking his explanation is the only legitimate one. Oh, I bet I think I know, actually. Or at least I have an idea. Is there really another? Take- look at this court record! I believe you'll find a simple answer there, in plain sight. Uh, how about you just say the answer in plain words? It, it would be hasty to deliver a verdict without answer questions, indeed. Well, Mr. Justice? Mr. Gavin said the court in this case demand an explanation. Let's look one more time. Let's check out the bottle. What? Think it was on it uh, upside down. Grape juice? How long has it been since I drank grape juice? Apparently it's Mr. Wright's favorite drink. Okay. What's this? Bottle is completely empty. Right. Is this the same? Bottle's completely empty. Okay. I'm just checking everything. Is it all the same? Okay. That's all the same. It's hard to know where to, like, check. It doesn't really give you a, uh... Just looks like a bottle. Bottle's completely empty. Okay. Demand an explanation. Well, let's see. Don't worry. Justice won't leave until justice is done. Perhaps the defense would like to care to- oh, sorry, care to enlighten the court- I can't read today, I don't know what the hell's going on. What evidence do you have to explain why the fingerprints on the bottle are upside down? My- my only thought is that Olga had something to do with it. Because she was there, she used the bottle. And maybe it somehow wound up on the table afterwards. Phoenix either picked it up or something like that. Because nobody else was there. But how do we... The thing is... Hmm... Let me think about this. Oh. 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 Now seems like the perfect- Oh no! <laughs> well, that was pretty funny. What do they expect? I have no idea how to explain it. You're thinking too hard, Apollo. The answer's right in front of you. Just reach down and pick it up. Or try picturing situations in which one might grab a bottle. Upside down. Oh! I see! Oh my god, I'm sorry. I had like... <laughs> I had to cough so bad. I don't know what the hell's going on with me today. Like, I'm not sick or anything. It's really weird. Sorry about that. Alright, um... I'm also thinking here. Why the fingerprints in the bottle upside down? The only thing else that I've got is like... Oh, I think this is it, actually. Jeez. I was thinking to myself, how did Phoenix get the bottle in the first place? Was it served to him? And then I thought maybe Olga had something to do with it. But in fact, she actually did have something to do with it, I think. It's because, look here, if we're going to believe this photo, it looks like maybe he just grabbed the bottle to use. Oh, man, I bet. Let's try this, because I don't have anything else. Maybe this. It's actually easier to show you than explain, Your Honor. Place that bottle on the floor next to your chair. Yeah, here we go. This is what Phoenix meant by just pick it up. It took me a second, too. Wow. Excuse me, on the floor? Yes. Now reach down and pick it up. Without getting out of your chair. Ah! That head nod. So good! See? You naturally go to pick up the bottle by its neck. With your fingers upside down. 
Oh shit. And he was drinking out of it too, because it was empty. Look at this photograph taken on the night of the murder. The defendant, Mr. Wright, sat here. Playing piano, bottles of grape juice on the floor to the side of his piano bench. He would have naturally picked up the bottles upside down several times. Wow, I can't believe it was that simple. Recall our dinner with that evening, Kristoff. I was drinking my usual juice then, too. Basically, you used the bottle on the table to do the deed. But then you must have remembered. So you went and picked up one of the bottles from under the piano. And you switched the bottles. You took one of Mr. Wright's bottles and made it look like the murder weapon. Wow. Wow, this is crazy good! Order, order! What do you have to say to these charges, Mr. Gavin? What do you have to say? Bet it'll be sexy. Fascinating. So this is the legendary attorney's famed tactic of misdirection. You're gonna keep blocking this? Come on, man. What? You claim that I switched the bottle? Where is your proof? Proof? Well, that's, uh... As I thought, more baseless conjecture. I'm afraid your bottle of proof is quite empty. Objection! Oh, Phoenix doesn't think so. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Your Honor, when you initiated the investigation of the hideout earlier, do you recall I requested an additional investigation? Ah, yes. I have your memo about that here. Retrieve the bottles from under the piano at the Borscht Bowl Club. <gasps> Maybe one of them's in there. Maybe the one that he used. And here's one of the bottles in question. Huh. <laughs> what? You're going to dust that for fingerprints too? I would be surprised if any was aware on that but his. Mr. Gavin probably wouldn't make such a novice mistake, true. That bottle won't bear a trace of anything. Say, Apollo. Yes? Why don't you go ahead and examine that bottle? But why? Just humor me. Alright. Mr. Wright. Gotta do what Phoenix says. That bottle will solve this case once and for all. What? That's some bottle! Alright, this is a different one, is it? Let's look. What does it say? Grape juice. Same. Oh, 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 oh! What's this? What's this? Look at this. What's this in here? There's something inside the bottle. Open it and get it. <gasps> there it is. Remember when Phoenix said that he shoved the card into the bottle? That's it. What's this? That card. It can't be. Recall that unpleasant woman's testimony for a moment. <laughs> he called her unpleasant. Uh, Miss Olga Orley? Yes, our little swindling Devotchka. That night I planted the card like I was supposed to, and Wright lost the last hand just like you were supposed to. Then Smith searched him. But the planted card was gone. The trap failed. Wait, this isn't... You're telling me that this is the planted card you disposed of? The one you mentioned in this piece of testimony? I happened to put my hand in my pocket and found a card. Yes, I snuck a peek at it and found it was the Five of Hearts. I had a feeling something might happen, so I disposed of the card before the game. Disposed? Where? There was an empty bottle of grape juice I had been drinking right beside- Here it is. This is it! I threw the card inside the bottle. So our bottle was the swapped one. There it is. The Five of Hearts. This is the card. The bottles were swapped. And the only one who could have done that was the fourth person in the club that night. You, Mr. Christoph Gavin. Dude! Uh-oh. Oh, honey. Oh, oh my god. Whoa! No, the lobster! Save him! Oh god, he's dead. Rip. You are right, boy. He's not okay. He's definitely not okay. No one's okay. This whole court is out of order. That is all. Oh, Phoenix, thank goodness you were here to help. Oh no. Come on, sexy, keep it together. Is this your idea of revenge? Phoenix, right? Revenge? Revenge for the events that took away your attorney's badge seven years ago. What is this? I need to know about this, please. My past is like my logic, straight and true. Nothing's changed. 
All I did was point the finger of justice in the proper direction. That was a play on words. I liked it. Fine. I'm glad we could have this little tete-a-tete, -tete, right? This... This is insane! What about me? Don't I get to prosecute anyone? You're done here, boy. Go home. And take that lime green suit with you. Ugh, barf. I believe this time we've finally come to the end of our trial. My gosh, this was a long tutorial. This was the longest tutorial trial yet. Mr. Payne, do you have a report for us on Christoph Gavin? He's admitted everything. We're processing his arrest now. Wow, okay, so my boss just got arrested, so, I mean, things in Apollo's land are going good right now. I see. Still one has to wonder why he would do such a thing. He didn't even have a connection to the victim, did he? Uh, none that we know of. Mr. Wright, have you anything to add? Phoenix, why did he do it? You must know. Was he trying to get you for something? I'm afraid I can't shed any more light on the matter. About this victim, Mr. Shady Smith. His occupation was listed as Traveler. An odd profession to be sure, and that's all we know about him. I'll arrange a follow-up investigation, Your Honor. Good. Mr. Wright? Yes? Seven years, and you still haven't lost your touch. Christoph Gavin was a man with much significance for me, both as a friend and a lawyer. He was extremely talented, to be sure. I needed two things before I could confront him. The first was a place where no injustice would be tolerated, this courtroom. The second was a man who would tolerate no injustice. In other words, a defense attorney. You, Apollo. He picked me. Me? A dark time is coming for our legal system. A twisting of justice brought by our very own court system. We have to set it right. Mr. Wright! Our work lies ahead of us, and I, for one, am looking forward to it. Oh, Phoenix! I wish you could be beside me. Well, this seems like a good time to announce a verdict. This court finds the defendant Mr. Phoenix Wright! Not guilty! Yay! We did it! It was a bit tricky this time. This game, I can tell, is already setting up to be harder than any of the ones I've played before. So maybe I won't have a perfect run this time. Who knows? Court is adjourned. Oh man, what a roller coaster that was. But it's too bad that they put that really hot guy in my face and then just take him right away. Isn't that always the way though? Phoenix, how you doing? Thanks, Apollo. You came through, just like I thought you would. I'm pretty sure I didn't do a thing in there. It was you who cornered Mr. Get the killer. I couldn't have done it by myself. You sensed it too today, didn't you? Your ability. What, Phoenix, how do you know about that? Ability? Yeah, a sensitivity I lack. You'll come to understand it soon enough. Wait, I wonder if he means- How does he know about that, though? What? Right, this part, where we got all Doctor Who on us and funky. Remember? That was a thing. I assume that that's gonna be like the kind of thing of the game, like the Magatama for Phoenix. What, what was that, Mr. Wright? You'll have to find the answer to that question yourself. The answer, right. Today was full of questions without answers, most of them about Mr. Gavin. What possible reason could he have had to commit murder? Perhaps you'll learn that in the days to come. Poor Apollo, though, he just lost his mentor and his boss. <laughs> Wait, you don't know, do you? This locket is the key. Huh? Oh, that reminds me. I met the girl whose picture's in your locket. We did meet her, she was really cute. Your daughter, right? That's right. She's my daughter. Is she actually, though? Well, she adopted or something. She's not seven. And we only left Phoenix seven years ago. You know, you were right about this locket. Eh? I took this off his neck the night he died. What? But it looks like our dear Russian scam artist saw me. So the truth is, this locket really did belong to him. Wait, but that's perjury. You testified you said that locket was yours! I said no such thing, actually. Huh? I merely said that it was a locket with my daughter's picture inside. A subtle distinction, but a distinction nonetheless. What does that mean? And it's the truth. Wait, but then why? Why was the victim wearing a locket with a picture of your daughter inside of it? Sometimes the straightest path to truth isn't the best one. 
particular time. Well, we better find out about this in this game, otherwise I'm gonna be very upset. You're still just getting started with your career. Speaking of which, I may be out of a job. I work for Gavin Law Offices after all. I still can't believe I just saw Mr. Gavin get led away in handcuffs. What about that, Paulo? Yes? How about coming to work for me? Really? Eh? You mean at the Wright and Cola offices? I mean, there's not a single attorney in my generation that doesn't know it. Oh, sorry! I thought that was Phoenix, I'm so sorry. I can't imagine that to be true, but... Wait, but didn't you... You're not a... Oh, uh, I turned in my badge, yeah. I'm not an attorney anymore. But... Who's still there? That incident seven years ago? That legendary trial. And at the middle of it all, was one man, Phoenix Wright. What is this about? The case reached a sad conclusion and he left law for good. Oh my gosh, I need to know. Have you ever thought about coming back to the courts? I'm not qualified to stand in a court of law, I'm afraid. Didn't you notice in today's trial? There was a single piece of forged evidence. There was? Oh no. Forged evidence? What are you talking about? I'm talking about evidence that shouldn't have existed. A naughty magician's trick. It's the bloody card, isn't it? One piece of evidence struck me as odd, it's true. It just seemed, well, too perfect. I'll bet this was the forged evidence. No, probably was. You mean this? Don't you? I got this from your uh, your daughter, Mr. Wright. Yeah, that card couldn't have been found at the crime scene. Why? Because the killer took it with him when he left. So he did use it to draw him out. He used it because Gavin seemed really upset that it was there, and he kept saying it was impossible. But by doing that, he admitted that he knew where the real card was. Oh, man. Leaving the wrong card in its place, luckily for us. Yeah, that's why he was going crazy about this, huh? By saying it was a fraud, he basically admitted that he knew everything about the setup. And that's what Phoenix did. He, Phoenix knew he would take that bait. He drew him out. It was a red herring. My verdict was already handed down seven years ago. Then, you really? Yes, I forged this card. One look at the crime scene should have told you it wasn't real. But... But you can't do something like that and call yourself an attorney? Who's calling themselves an attorney? I guess. So it's true. The rumor is true? Seven years ago. None of that matters much now, does it? What is going on? I need to know! Oh god, this is crazy! I punched him. Did you, Apollo? <gasps> Boy, got some guts there. It's your story from here on out, Apollo. Perhaps I can help you turn the next page. My office's address. Drop in if you like. Mr. Wright? Oh, about your uppercut. Try yelling take that next time. I find it packs a little more punch. And Apollo, thanks for today. I had a good time. Phoenix, what's happened to you? I God, I gotta know. I, oh, I'm, is this game gonna tell me? I hope so. And with that, Mr. Wright walked out the door. And that's how my first trial ended. A lot of mysteries went unsolved. And, at the time, I had no idea they were all related. Every mystery that day, connected by a single thread of logic. I'd find that out soon enough. My name is Apollo Justice, attorney at law, and this is how my story begins. Oh my gosh, this was so good! Yay! The end! Wow, I fumbled a little there, but that's to be expected. I didn't think that they would ramp up so much just in the tutorial alone, so I kind of like sat on my laurels. But man, if this is a, a like a showing of what the game has to offer, I'm actually kind of excited for a more challenging game. Uh, it probably doesn't mean that I'll screw up more, but whatever. Oh man, well you guys got the almost hour long video you wanted, so thank you so, so much for watching. I will see you in the next one for Turnabout Corner, whatever that is. I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. Leave a like if you do. It really does help. Thanks so much, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.